It's Saturday, April 9th, 2016, upstate New York, about uh, six miles north of Saratoga Springs. Today's project is this uh, uh, medium to large uh, beech tree. The beavers have uh, pretty much stripped off the bark around the base, as they did to that much whiter uh, ash tree in the background. The uh, leaves have not yet broken, so even though they stripped this tree in the winter, the upper branches may still be something the beavers can consume. Their lodge is uh, right out there, and uh, the green plastic Adirondack chair is one of my wife's uh, places where she likes to come and sit and watch. I'm going to have to move that, and we'll take this tree, which has a little bit of a lean in the direction we want, but uh, uh, not enough to ensure that it'll go where we want. So I'm going to throw a rope up in it, cut it, and then get it to fall over in that direction. It's got a lot of branches and a lot of interference. Hopefully it will make it to the ground on the first shot, um, but not sure. We may have to recut it to get it down. Um, since the beavers may still be interested in the upper parts of the tree, I will put those in the water um, so they can get to them easily. They've got a lot of area to patrol, so it may be a day or two before they realize it's available and uh, start uh, consuming it. I've brought a couple of wedges and a little hammer with me to help push the tree over. But in situations where I have other trees that I can pull against, I usually prefer to uh, try and do that work with a rope. So what I'm going to do is coil it and uh, aim for one of the fairly low branches here. I don't need to get a lot of leverage. The tree appears to have a lean going that way, but then it curls back overhead. So just wrap it a couple times. And we'll go for uh, that second or third branch there. Okay. And now we can take and tie that around, and then we'll have something we can pull that direction. Beech is a pretty dense wood, pretty hard, so the beavers have probably not chosen to go further than getting the bark off of it. They do go after small beech trees because that's not that much work to fell one of those and all of the upper branches are good for them. In this case, I'm interested in that good dense wood for firewood and I'm going to try and leave the tops in the water for the beavers. Since I'm rendering this into firewood, I'm not particularly concerned about trying to get all of the trunk in one shot. So I'm going to work from a convenient height to do the felling cut and then I'll do another cut for the firewood and then I'll try to get a lot of the uh, uh, stump as well but I'll make that a fairly short cut because with all that contorted wood where the buttress roots go out that's difficult to split so if you keep it short it's a lot easier to split short pieces.
do the cutting on the trunk. It's a fairly significant uh, piece of wood, so I'm using this mid-size saw, an MS-271. To do the limbing, um, I don't want to lift that thing, so I'm using a much smaller saw, this MS-170. It's uh, quite a bit more lightweight, and for the small stuff, it'll go through it uh, just fine. So uh, it may be a bit of extravagance, but I prefer to use uh, saws that I consider appropriate for the work being done. So next I'm going to do a bunch of limbing. I'll try to leave the uh, trunk up in the air since I prefer to work at waist height and uh, not worry about hitting the ground. It's only about 50 feet to where my pickup is, but this stuff is pretty heavy and I really prefer to just wheel it because that's probably pushing three hundred pounds of wood and I'd rather wheel it than uh, carry it. Well, got most of the work done, but I'm going to have to finish up tomorrow. My feet are getting cold and for a diabetic that's not a good thing at all. I've put all the tops out in the water, in most cases with the cut ends down in the water kind of like cut flowers. You want the water to get up to keep the buds fresh. We'll see if the beavers enjoy it. European history in this part of North America is very brief compared to European history in Europe or for that matter history just about any place else. But for our history around here this uh, is part of a fairly old wall that was uh, built shortly after the Revolutionary War. And you can see by the size of some of the boulders that they must have used ox teams to drag these into place. I think it was much less about building walls than it was about getting all the glacial boulders out of the way so they could have pasture for their cattle and in some places uh, areas to grow crops. So these were, I think, primarily just to get uh, things out of the way. But every once in a while I am reminded that uh, this property up until the Great Depression was actually part of a working farm. Here's a case in point. I occasionally run into these old pieces of ribbon wire it's basically the precursor to barbed wire. Um, it's kind of amazing that this has been around for oh, over 70 years and hasn't completely rusted away. The uh, points, however, that were originally quite sharp are all now quite dull, so I don't have to worry about uh, getting injured on them. These are hundreds and hundreds of snow fleas that have uh, hopped onto my hard hat while it's been laying here on the ground. When the wind quits blowing, I, I can hear them hopping all through the leaves. There have to be millions and millions of them out in the forest right now. Fortunately, they don't bite. This piece of wood that I'm going to cut already has an uneven top. To make it easy to split, I'm going to want a level base, which means I'm going to want to cut all the way through in one cut. When you do something like that, as you get near the end, the piece is going to settle on your saw and pinch it, and you don't want that to happen. So what you do is, once you get progressed well through, you go ahead and insert a wedge. And I pay attention to the timing. What I like to do is make sure that I'm far enough through so that when I put the wedge in 
it will actually have a chance of lifting the piece, not just holding the position. I also don't want to go so far through that it's already started to settle. So I try to leave about three inches or so on the back side so that it's still supporting the piece, but I can drive the wedge in. I usually try to cut the stumps off as close to the ground as I can get without risking uh, contacting any dirt or rock with the chain. It's not so much that I'm interested in the wood for firewood, I just don't like to see the stumps uh, uh, showing in the forest, so I want them to be as removed as possible. Well, not a lot of wood, but come the winter of 2017-2018, this should provide probably 10 days of good heating. So, look forward to that time. Well, it's about 10 days later, and it's pretty hard to tell. But the beavers have come in, and they've eaten maybe a quarter of uh, what I left them. So they're not eating as much as I hoped they would, but they are working on it. I feel I just got to share this. This is the area where the geese and beavers usually come in to eat. Right next to my viewing area, which is really nice. But what uh, cracks me up about this is every year the little baby beavers have to practice building dams and lodges. So those four rocks you see there are part of their classroom exercise. Uh, they've dragged those rocks out of the pond and uh, put the sticks there. So that's uh, part of their uh, first effort to be productive as part of the beaver family. What's also a little bit interesting is if you look out in the water here, um, you can make out a lot of the white sticks that the adult beavers have brought over and nibbled the bark off of. So they've adopted this as their eating area, which I'm kind of pleased by, and they dragged those branches, and they are all uh, birch branches. They dragged them from way over there. 